Okay, so now we're going to look at a particular example within the regasolic order. The soil pit that we're looking at here is an orthic regasol. So in this case, uh, it's the regasolic order. It's also the regasol great group, and then orthic refers to the subgroup, where it's a, a good example of a typical regasol. And so, as with any soil, when we're looking into the soil pit, one of the first things we're looking for is any obvious changes in color, and then as we explore a little more, we're going to look for changes in texture and structure, maybe for changes in effervescence as we move down through the, through the soil. And now in this particular soil, because it is of the regasolic order, it is a weakly developed soil. And so there's not a whole lot to look at, certainly compared to some of the other soils that we've seen or that we will see as we move through the orders. This is not the most dynamic or fascinating soil to look at, but you can tell quite a bit about the, the history of it just by the fact that there isn't much to see. And so within this particular uh, example of the, within this, this orthic regasol soil pit, the only real striking visual difference that we can see when we look at it specifically is that we have a slightly darker uh, horizon on the top and underlain by a, the, the lighter layer below. And so if we look down into the actual soil pit, we've got uh, the surface horizon. We've, I would say we've got a change in, in the... In the uh, the color right around this point here. So if I just draw a line there, and so that's right around eight or nine centimeters from the soil surface. And so we would say that we've this is our A horizon from say zero to nine centimeters, and underneath that we have our, our directly our C horizon. And so in terms of the actual characteristics of each of these horizons, if we look at the uh, at the color of them, we, as with any of the soils that we've looked at, we'll look at that based on the, um, the Munsell color chart. And throughout much of the prairies, we focus on the 10YR chart. And so again, we can just look at comparing the, the different colors uh, as, as they match up to the, uh, the different values and chromas within this. And so this particular soil would probably fall somewhere along, along the lines of, so we would report it as being a 10YR and then probably about a, uh, a five or a six over two. And if we move further down within the soil profile, then we're looking more at a, a seven, seven over one or seven over two in terms of the, the colors within that. So we're looking at a very light colored soil. So within this, part of the reason that we're seeing that this soil is so light is basically that this is very weakly developed parent material. And so even the A horizon, so this slightly darker layer from zero to nine centimeters, in this case, it's, uh, it's just slightly modified relative to the parent material. That's why the two, the, the colors are so close together between the two. We see a much uh, sharper contrast in other soils. And one of the characteristics of this soil, because its parent material is right to, comes right to the surface, as we've talked about before, the, much of the glacial till parent material, much of the glacial, even the lacustrian or glacial fluvial parent material uh, in Saskatchewan and throughout um, uh, the prairies, has uh, calcareous in nature, so it has significant deposits of calcium carbonate within it. And the way we test for that is by uh, dripping a bit of dilute hydrochloric acid on it. And so in this soil, now typically we would use this as a way to distinguish, to figure out where the parent material starts. And so we would, uh, we would take the, the dilute HCl and we would just drip a little bit of, of it onto the soil. And what we would see is that there's, there is some, some effervescence. So these bubbles forming basically uh, carbon, uh, carbon dioxide is being given off through the reaction. And so very typically that's how we tell when we've reached that calcareous parent material, the calcareous till parent material. In this soil, it's not only in, in the, the sea horizon that we're seeing that, we're also seeing it right up at the surface. So that tells us, remember I mentioned when I was talking about uh, the landscape position that we're in and how it's a, a, a really dry location, not a lot of translocation within the soil profile, that we can tell that because we, we haven't seen the carbonates being translocated downward within the soil profile. Uh, in a lot of soils where they're better drained uh, or where there's a lot more precipitation uh, input or water moving through the profile, those carbonates would have gradually been leached out of the, of the profile and moved down and deposited in the upper part of the sea horizon.
So in terms of what we would call the different horizons that we're looking at here, the surface horizon would be called the would be called an AP horizon. And we would call it that, so we would say we have an AP from 0 to 9. We would call it that because it's we know that at some point in the history of this soil it was subjected to cultivation. And uh, the P, I, I usually remember that the, the P designator based on there's been an influence of plowing on this particular horizon. So the, the AP horizon from 0 to 9 centimeters reflects that it has had a history of cultivation. If we didn't know that there had been cultivation prior to this being converted to a grassland, we might call it just an AH horizon because there is a little bit of uh, um, uh, organic matter inputs from the, from the, the above the grass species that are at the surface here. But in addition to it being called an AP horizon, we would actually add another suffix to that. We would say that it's an APK horizon, where the K refers to the, the effervescence, the, the, the carbonate deposits that we've noted here. And so we would say we have an APK from 0 to 9 centimeters, and then a CK horizon, so again, where the K is referring to the presence of the carbonates. Uh, and uh, as we could tell from this, the strong effervescence within that soil profile, a CK horizon from 9 to 35 centimeters plus. So when we're describing soils in the field, these are some of the things we note. We would note the colors that we talked about for the different horizons. We would note the depth of the different horizons, name each of them. We also want to make sure that we, we talk about what the some of the characteristics of the uh, of the parent material itself. And so in this case, like I mentioned earlier, this would this particular site would be characterized by a glacial till parent material. And so one of the ways that we can tell that, just by looking even at the material that I've dug out of the pit here, is that it is, it is a poorly sorted matrix. So within the material, we're seeing a mixture of sand, silt, and clay, and included within that, some of these big stones. Uh, some of the other major parent materials then that we see in the province would be the glacial fluvial or the glacial lacustrine. So all of them deposited by glaciers, but they would differ in that those, the, those ones have been reworked by water. They tend to be, in the case of glacial fluvial, a lot of the fine material has been washed away. In the case of glacial lacustrine, it's predominantly just fine material. Glacial till, because it was deposited sort of as one big lump by melting ice, tends to be this mixture of all kinds of different sizes of separates. So just like we see the, the sort of stones here, or when we were digging it up, there was even some really big stones mixed in with that. And so that's one of your first big clues that you're dealing with glacial till. We would also describe the, uh, the texture of the horizons, and so within this I've got a little bit of the A horizon here. So just like we've seen before, one of the ways that we can uh, measure that or, or determine what the texture is, is by taking uh, a little bit of that, wetting it up, and then looking at uh, the, what sort of ribbon that forms within this. This has a good bit of, of clay associated with it. Um, it's also, it's got that a, a significant mixture of materials within it, but it also holds together really well when we mix it up. And so we can see that it's, it holds together and it forms quite a, a, a strong, what we refer to as the, the ribbon within that. And so it, it, it feels like it's got quite a bit of, it forms probably about a three or four centimeter ribbon. And then when we uh, wet that up a little bit further, it has quite a bit of grit associated with it. And so if we were to go through the various steps that, you could, uh, that you've got in your soil classification guide, we, we would probably classify this out as a, as a sandy loam, which is not at all uncommon in terms of the, the nature of the, the glacial till parent material. So we would say we have a sandy loam parent material, sandy loam glacial till parent material, one of the other characteristics that we sometimes describe is the structure, but in this case we don't have a whole lot of structure because it is so weakly developed and structure is something that develops over time as a soil matures. And so we would just say that it's structureless and to describe the structureless uh, it would be massive in this case. It's just one big massive lump without structure talked a little bit about the effervescence and so the overall when we look at this soil profile uh, the, the diagnostic or the, the defining characteristic of the regosolic order is its lack of a B horizon and so it, this is a good example of that because we just have the APK right over the CK.